Hello, and welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. Today we are so excited to be introducing our brand new canvas and easel dies. We're also going to be introducing our art supplies dies, and these are so much fun. What's really great about these dies is that they're great separately, and they're also really, really great used together. And we're gonna be showing you a ton of ideas in the video today. We're also gonna be showing you the brand new paint splatter background stencil, and I am in love with this stencil. So let's go ahead and check all of these products out. First, we're gonna take a look at the canvas and easel dies, and it comes with an easel, a little canvas, and also a stool. And the stool is really, really great for putting critters on, and then the critters can be creating their works of art. And we're gonna be showing you some fun things with that during the video. So here you can see the canvas layers perfectly onto the easel, and then you can add the little stool right next to it. Here is a look at the art supplies dies, and these are so much fun. First up, it comes with a really large splatter, and then there's these two little mini splatters that you can layer over or behind it. There's all of the pieces to make a paintbrush. There's also a cute little jar. We also have an artist palette and some globs of paint that you can add to the palette and a paint tube too. One of the things I love about this die set is that it has all the little pieces separate so that you can add a ton of detail. So here's how you put the paintbrush together. There's the little piece in the middle. I like to cut that out of metallic cardstock and then the paintbrush part at the top. The paint tube has the little thing you can add in the middle to add the color of the paint and then a lid. And then of course we have these awesome little globs of paint for our paint palette. And then in the jar, you can actually tuck the paintbrushes in. There's a little cut line in there and that makes it so cute. You can also tuck the paint tube in with the paintbrush and I really like that look as well. Now next up, we're gonna take a look at the paint splatter background stencil. I love this stencil so much. It works great on portrait and landscape. And first we're gonna take a look at portrait. So I'm just gonna kind of center it in the card. The cool thing is, is you could ink this up and then keep filling in all of the edges too, but I really like the look of it centered with some white space around it. So the first way that we're gonna ink it up is just with one color of ink. I'm using Merman ink, which is my favorite color. And I'm just gonna use a blender brush, pick up some of that ink and then lightly ink it on. As I ink up the different splatters, what I like to do is create some areas that are darker and some areas that are lighter. And that variation and kind of the gradient of the ink is what makes this look really dynamic and really special. So you'll see I'm going over each splatter and just darkening parts of the edges so that there's a nice little dark to light gradient. Now, my favorite part, we're gonna lift up the stencil and how beautiful is that? Oh, I love this stencil so much. That background is so much fun. Now, of course, the second I saw this, I thought it has to be rainbow. And so that's what we're gonna do next. And we're going to do it in a landscape style this time. So I love that it looks great both ways. So I'm going to put my piece of card stuck down landscape. And both of these are the standard size of five and a half by four and a quarter. And I'm going to look through the stencil, see it where it looks the nicest, find position. I'm going to hold it in place with those magnets and we're going to start to ink it up. I'm starting with some bubblegum ink and I'm gonna do a rainbow pattern that's gonna be kind of diagonal. So I'm gonna start in the upper left-hand corner and we're working our way down to the bottom right-hand corner. So I'm gonna do some of that pink there. And now we have peach fuzz for the orange. And then I'm gonna go back to my pink and then back to the orange just to make sure they're nice and blended well together. Then we're gonna bring in some lemonade for the yellow. And every time I bring in a new color, I'm overlapping the previous color just a little bit. Now here's Minty Fresh, and as it overlays on top of the green, it gives you a really bright green, and as we go down, you can see a little bit more of the blue that's in that color. And then again, I'm gonna go back to the previous color, the yellow, and just kind of blend the two together. Now here we have some Mermaid, so I'm gonna bring that in. And then we're gonna do fresh lavender for the purple. And isn't that so pretty? And this was really quick and easy to do. And you'll see as we lift up the stencil, it looks so pretty. And we're gonna definitely use this background on a card in just a little bit. And then here's a comparison between the two, the single color and the rainbow. Um, I love that you can do them landscape or portrait depending on whatever card design you wanna do. And I think the splatters would look really pretty in like a fun color palette with two or three colors as well. Now we are gonna be recreating a card by Grace and this card is so much fun. It's a magic picture changer and it's really awesome. But we're gonna start off by doing some inking. So here I have a stitched rectangle. It's the largest stitched rectangle at five and a half by four and a quarter. And we're gonna take out our brick stencil. And I really like the brick stencil for the background of this whole artist scene. It just works really, really well. 
We're going to be inking a pastel y looking rainbow over this brick stencil, and that's going to be our background for the card. So, we're starting off with some ballet slippers ink, and I'm using a really, really light hand, just keeping it nice and light over the brick stencil. For our orange, we're going to use some peach fuzz. And once again, I'm overlapping the colors just like we did with the paint splatter stencil to make sure that there is a nice blend. Now, for the yellow, we're going to use lemonade. And then once again, I'm going to go back to that orange just to make sure everything's blended. Now, we're going to have minty fresh. And as the minty fresh overlaps, the yellow it gives us this really great bright, bright green color and then as we keep going we're going to see some of the blue that's in the minty fresh which is going to help us go into our merman color that's going to fill in the rest of the rainbow on this brick wall now once that's done i'm just going to kind of go back between the colors again and where i see any kind of empty areas or empty areas that didn't blend very well i'm just going back through and filling those colors in then we can lift up our stencil and now you'll see look at that brick wall oh it's so cool now we're going to be making a magic picture changer today. And so I'm gonna take out the magic picture changer add-on, which is that kind of cover plate for it there. And we're gonna be inking this in the same exact way as we did the brick wall, because I want this to blend in. So I'm just kind of eyeballing it to see exactly how I'm gonna color this. And we're gonna start off with the orange because this piece is gonna be shifted over to the right-hand side. So I'm actually just layering my stencil. I didn't even clean it. I just left the same ink on there. I layered it over to the edge just like that. And we're gonna start off with that peach fuzz orange and build up the same brick wall. So we'll add a little bit of the orange and then move our way through the colors. And this is going to help us blend in this magic picture changer so it's going to look like it's a part of the background scene. So now we'll bring in that lemonade and then we'll work our way into the minty fresh and then the merman. Then we'll lift up that stencil, revealing the really cool brick pattern. And then you'll see as we layer over top of the previous brick pattern, it's gonna fill in perfectly and it makes it blend in so much. It's like a chameleon, you almost can't see it. Now it's time to work on the magic picture changer mechanism. And what's gonna happen is our magic picture changer is going to be the canvas. It's so cool. And so we need to work on two pictures, the first picture and then the second picture you see when you pull the interactive die. So on the first one, we're stamping this super cute rainbow from Rain or Shine Before and Afters in some manatee ink, which is a nice light gray. And then we're stamping in some jet black ink for our second picture. And then I'm gonna use my Copic markers to add some fun, happy rainbow colors to this really, really sweet rainbow and cloud design. Now, I already have cut a mask for this. I stamped on a full stick post-it and I cut around it. And honestly, I think I cut this mask like four years ago or three years ago, something like that, maybe four years ago. And so I can keep reusing it. I've used it a bunch of times. And so I'm gonna peel it off the packaging. I always save my masks right onto my stamp packaging. I can peel it off and I can line it right up with my stamped and colored image. And I love that I can reuse this mask over and over again. Now I'm going to be taking out the new Sunray stencil and I love this Sunray so much and we're going to be adding a little Sunray behind this cloud. And the reason we're doing this is we want to have this really nice bright change from the gray plain canvas to our colored in canvas and now we're going to have this beautiful bright sunshiny yellow in the background. So we're going to use that same lemonade ink which is the same yellow that we ink blended onto the brick wall and I'm just going to blend that right all over this stencil and you can see we're going right over that mask that we created and it's protecting our stamped and colored design. Then we're gonna lift up the stencil. Oh, that looks so pretty. And then I'm just gonna take a little bit more of that lemonade ink and just ink it a little bit at the bottom so it almost feels like the sun's at the bottom and then the rays are coming out of it. Then we've hit my most favorite part ever which is revealing the mask. I love this. It always makes me feel like I'm on a makeover show, but for stamps, right? So we're gonna reveal the big design. And isn't that so pretty to have those sun rays behind that beautiful, fun image? And then now I'm gonna take my mask, I'm gonna stick it back onto my stamp packaging, and I can use it again and have it for years and years. So in the Magic Picture Changer, there is a larger piece and a smaller pull tab piece. The smaller pull tab piece is your second image and the larger piece is your first image. So in this case, we want kind of our blank canvas and then going into our colored in canvas. I'm gonna look through that viewfinder window in the Magic Picture Changer and center that cute image in there and then hold it in place with some low tack tape. Then I'll look for it through the other viewfinder and I'm gonna center it and make it look as much as I can like the one on the left. So I'm just centering it, kind of seeing the spacing between everything, eyeballing it, holding those in place, and then we're gonna run that through the die cut machine. And as we pop these die cuts out of the die, you'll see that we have two pieces that we're gonna end up weaving together to create this cool interactive mechanism. And if you've never created a magic picture changer before, make sure to check out our intro to magic picture changer video. We'll link it in the description below. 
the main pocket piece die has these two score lines on either side. And we're gonna fold along those score lines, creating these two kind of like skinny little tabs on the outsides. These are gonna end up becoming a track for the moving piece to move along. That way it moves right exactly in the right position. So we're gonna fold along those score lines, and then we're gonna take out our bone folder and just crease those really, really well so there's a nice sharp crease. We'll also fold along that middle score line that kind of folds the whole thing in half. Next, we're gonna take out some eighth inch double-sided adhesive and we're gonna add that tape on the inside of both of these tabs and also on the outside of both of these tabs for a total of four pieces. So we've got them on the inside and then we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna put the tape on the outside of each tab. Next, we're gonna do my special trick to make magic picture changers work really, really well. And I'm gonna be using this awesome anti-static powder tool here, and we're gonna be adding the anti-static powder to the outside and the inside of those little kind of finger tabby things. And that's gonna help the paper as it moves along each other have less friction because it's gonna have that baby powder covering it. So you see we're doing that on the outside, the inside of both pieces. Now to put this mechanism together, we're gonna to take the main pocket piece and flip it over, and we're also gonna take that small tab piece and flip it over too. And we're gonna insert the tab into the slot in the middle of the pocket piece, just like that. Now you'll notice there's four almost like little finger tabs here, and there's four slots in the other one. So each one is gonna fit into each one. So we're gonna line up that tab there. It's always a little hard to show this on camera, and we're gonna line up the first tab with the first slot, then the second tab with the second slot, and so on. And so this is gonna help us kind of weave these tabs in together, almost like a little basket weave. So you can see there we're weaving each one through. And you can already see as we pull the tab how the picture is gonna change. Ah, it's so fun. All right, so now we're gonna flip this over and we need to form the tracks because we wanna make sure that that piece is moving nice and straight. So the first thing I'm gonna do is look really carefully to make sure that tab is nice and straight so that it's not in the way when we start to fold down these tabs. Then I'm gonna peel up the liner paper on that adhesive that we added earlier and we're just gonna press down securing that. And you'll see how that's becoming a little track for our Magic Picture Changer moving piece. Now we'll do the same thing on the other side. We'll peel up the liner paper and we're gonna fold down and adhere that tab to the inside. Next, I'm gonna confirm again that this tab is right in the center, right in between these two tabs. So you see I kind of exaggerated it there. You don't want it off to the side. You wanna make sure it's in the middle so that it can still move because now we're gonna peel up the liner paper that was on the outside of those tabs. We've folded them over and now we can peel up that liner paper right there on both sides and we're gonna close the whole pocket shut which is gonna secure the whole thing. So again, I'm always really careful here making sure that my tab is nice and straight, my pull tab, that it's right in between those two tracks and now we can go ahead and fold this shut and that's gonna adhere the whole pocket together, creating our awesome magic picture changer mechanism. And now of course, I just have to play with it and see how it's working. Now, something about the Magic Picture Changer is, is it's got this really great informative tab. It's like a little tab that tells the recipient what to do. We have one that says pull and one with an arrow. But it's not only informative, it's also functional because it becomes a stopper for the Magic Picture Changer so you don't end up pushing that tab just all the way through it. So you'll see we'll fold the little tab in half at the score line the die creates for you in the center. We're gonna add some adhesive to the inside and then we're gonna sandwich it right along the top of this. So I'll make sure it's nice and centered and then the top of that tab is gonna fit right at that fold line and we can just fold it right over. And you'll see that that stops our mechanism from being pushed all the way through and it makes the magic picture changer work even better. And I love that it tells the recipient what to do. Now I wanted to fill in the letters of the pole with some other die cut letters so that we could do some nice kind of inlay die cutting. So I'm taking a double-sided adhesive sheet and I'm just gonna attach it to the back of some Peacock cardstock. And then we're gonna die cut it with that same pull tab die piece we're gonna inlay those letters into the word pull. And because we use the double-sided adhesive sheet, it's almost like we made little letter stickers. And so we don't have to worry about trying to put liquid glue in there or anything. So the last one we'll drop in is the P and you'll see in the center of the P now it's white. So I'm just gonna drop in the little piece of mermaid cardstock that's the same as the outside to fill that in and give it a nice finished look. Now we're gonna bring back that Magic Picture Changer add-on that we inked with the brick stencil from earlier and we're gonna add this to the front. Now there's a special way to add adhesive to the Magic Picture Changer add-on because you wanna make sure you don't get any adhesive right there because that's where your mechanism is moving. So what I always tell myself is I'm gonna go corner to corner. So I'm going corner to corner on all four corners 
And then you can add adhesive to the top and the bottom, just not on the side. So I'll add a little bit to the top, a little bit to the bottom. And now we can take this whole thing and layer it over top and you can see how it's starting to frame our work of art. We're gonna incorporate the canvas and easel die into the Magic Picture Changer and how Grace did this was just so brilliant. So we're gonna take the easel die here and we've cut that out of some wood grain cardstock, some of the light brown wood grain. And then I'm just gonna take some Distress Ink here in Vintage Photo and just ink it kind of randomly all the way around just to give it a little bit of kind of an aged look and I feel like it makes the die cut feel kind of special. Then we're gonna trim off the top and we're gonna trim off the bottom because we don't need these pieces in the center for this card because the magic picture changer is gonna be in the center. Now the magic picture changer comes with this cute little frame here and I inked that. You'll see I'm gonna change it later. I didn't like how the inking turned out, but we're gonna add that frame right onto the bottom of the easel and then we're gonna add the top of the easel to the very top, just like that. We're leaving out the middle part and it's letting us put something that's a little bit of a different size from the original canvas on the inside by cutting the pieces apart. So now we can add some adhesive all to the back and we're using the Magic Picture Changer little square frame as our canvas, but we're using the easel die. And we were able to do that by cutting it. And now look, how cool is that? We have an easel and we have a canvas that can change color by pulling the tab. Now we're gonna start working on the background for this really cool changing easel. And so here we have some white wood grain cardstock. We're gonna cut that up to about an inch high and that's gonna become the ground on that really cool brick that we stenciled earlier. Now for a baseboard, this was such a cute idea. The picket fence die has this like cool little stitched piece. We're gonna die cut that from some pe peacock cardstock. There's that picket fence piece and that's gonna become our baseboard and that's gonna help integrate these two pieces together. So I'm gonna add adhesive to this one and I'm just gonna tuck that right underneath the easel, right along the very bottom of that magic picture changer mechanism. And then we can trim off the excess. Then we're gonna take another piece and we're gonna layer it at the top of that white wood grain floor. And so that's gonna be our baseboard and it's gonna integrate the two and make it look seamless together as we adhere them. And this is looking so cute. And of course I have to pull the tab. It's just so cool to see that painting fill in with color. Now what this scene needs is some art supplies. So we're gonna be using the art supplies dies. We're also gonna be using the stool from the canvas and easel. And we're going to be adding color to these with some markers. So some of these are cut out of white wood grain cardstock like the stool. And then some are cut out of the brown wood grain cardstock like the paintbrush and the palette. And the rest we've cut out of white cardstock, storm cloud, and also some fog cardstock. So it's really nice because you can add Copic markers to the top of these different types of cardstock, whether it's the wood grain or it's like the light gray or the dark gray or anything and it'll add a little bit of extra cool dimension to it. Now remember how I told you I didn't like the frame very much when I inked it? I decided to use my markers instead. So I die cut it from the white wood grain just like the stool and I'm using the same markers. There's some E30 markers just to add some color and I think that looks much prettier than my inking. I just didn't do a very good job inking it. So I'm going to peel that right off and then I can add some tape runner to the back and then add my new easel frame right on top and I think that looks so much prettier. And then now we're gonna go back into adding color to the rest of the die cuts. And there's something about adding just a little bit of edging either with ink or with a marker that just brings these die cuts to life. And so that's what we're doing here on the darker wood grain cardstock. Then I'm gonna make a turquoise stool and I'm gonna kind of incorporate the same color as we had in that turquoise little baseboard there for the top of the stool. And I think that's just a really fun look. And I'm just gonna keep adding color and just kind of building it up. Now for the globs of paint, I'm using the same markers that I used to color in the rainbow so that it looks like when the rainbow is colored in, the ink came off the palette. I'm also adding a little bit of yellow to the very top of the paintbrush. So it looks like just a little bit of the ink is at the very top of that paintbrush piece. And I think that's such a cool look. I'm also adding some shading to the jar lids for the paint tubes. And I'm also adding a little bit of shading to the bottom of those paint tubes. And you'll see as I blend it out into that colored cardstock, it looks so amazing. Now for our paint tubes, we're gonna add once again, the same markers that we use to color in our awesome painting so that everything really coordinates there. And I had left all of my markers on my desk so I was able to easily look through them and pick out the same colors. And so for those, we'll do some greens and some turquoises. Now we're gonna add some liquid glue to those globs of paint and start adding them to the palette. I like to start with the ones at the ends and that way I can kind of fill in the rest of the arc, making sure I have enough space for all of my colors. 
Next, we'll layer on the pieces for the paintbrush and then for the paint tubes. And I just love seeing these come to life. There's something so magical about them colored in with markers. I think they'd be really pretty colored in with watercolor as well. It just makes them look like almost real. It's so cool. Now, next up, to help complete the scene, we're gonna bring in a favorite critter, which is the Scent with Love skunk, and he is so cute, and he's just a perfect match for that paintbrush. I'm also gonna bring in a little beret from Bicycle Built for Two, because, you know, he's painting, so he needs a little accessory, right? We're also gonna take a little speech bubble from Dad Jokes, and then we're gonna use the phrase, I arted from Just Add Glitter. We're also gonna be using the, I made this just for you, and we're gonna heat emboss that on this awesome wavy banner that's been cut out of peacock cardstock and we're going to stamp that in some clear embossing ink then we're going to sprinkle on some white heat embossing powder we're going to heat that up with the heat tool and then we'll have a nice bright white shiny sentiment that we can layer onto the card now for the rest of the scene, we're gonna be adding something with foam squares, some things are gonna be flat against the card, just kind of to add different dimension. And for the stool, we're gonna add some foam squares onto there, and then we can add some foam squares on the back of our cute little skunk. And the skunk is gonna be holding the paintbrush, and so I'm gonna kind of tuck up behind his paw and put part of it on the front of his leg, and I think that's just a really, really cool look. And so we can layer him right onto there, and I love the look of the paintbrush kind of overlaying our canvas. Then we're gonna add the little beret, and oh my gosh, he's just so cute. And we'll add the phrase, I arted, which just makes me laugh as well. Then for the bottom of the scene, we're gonna add our paint tubes and also the palette. Um, it just really fills it in nicely, and I love that all of the color colors all coordinate together. It's just so pretty. And then for the palette, we're gonna add that on with some foam squares just to give it a nice little pop, and the paint tubes are flat, just to give some cool dimension. And then we're just gonna layer this whole banner in between, so it's gonna kinda tuck in between that palette that's popped up, and then over top of the paint tubes. And then we can just use our scissors to trim off the excess of the banner. Next, we're gonna take a standard size card base that's five and a half by four and a quarter. We'll add some tape runners to the front and then we can layer the card base on top. And then to add a little extra dimension, we're gonna take out a white gel pen and just add some details around both the critter and the die cut elements. And you can see as we add the little white gel pen details, it just makes everything pop and brings kind of a fun cartoony feel into it. And I feel like it just makes the die cuts almost look three dimensional. So we're gonna add it to the easel and to the canvas. And now the card is all done. And oh my gosh, I am in love with this card. Card, Grace, this card is just so beautiful. It was so much fun to create. And it's so cool to find a way to incorporate the canvas and easel die into the magic picture changer. And so you can imagine our cute little skunk, he's got the yellow color on his paintbrush and he's colored in that beautiful sunrise with that awesome rainbow over top. So cute, so much fun. And this would definitely make someone's day. Now for this card, we used it in a bit of a non-traditional way. And for our next card, we're gonna be using it in a much more traditional way. And this card is fun because it's kind of a mix between a card that Rebecca and I created and a card that Mindy created. So it's really fun to kind of mix and match these. And we're gonna be starting off with the canvas that's included in the canvas and easel die. And we're gonna use some washi tape to mask off the edges. And I think this is a really, really fun look for this canvas because it kind of makes it feel like a real canvas. So I'm aligning up the washi tape right with the stitched edges of this stitched square and so I'm going to go all the way around and then we're going to do some ink blending. Remember that paint splatter background that we created at the beginning with the fun rainbow? I'm using a lot of the same colors here for this canvas. The only thing extra I did was I brought in some freshly cut grass ink, which is that green there, just to bring in kind of a bold, bright look. And now as I brought in all the colors, I'm going back and forth to make sure it's blended. And then my favorite part always is revealing, right? So we're gonna peel back that washi tape. And now we have this really pretty rainbowy canvas that has the nice clean cut edges all of the way around. Now here's that paint splatter background that we did before, and this was a standard size at five and a half by four and a quarter, but I wanted to cut it down with a stitched rectangle. So I'm gonna take out an outside in stitched rectangle, which is just gonna cut off a little bit. That's gonna be five and a quarter by four, and it's gonna give us the really pretty stitched edge too. Then for the ground of our scene, we're gonna be using some flower market paper. This is the B side that has a really great stripe. And we're gonna die cut that with the same exact die, and then we're gonna trim it down to be about three quarters of an inch tall. 
So we're gonna layer that at the bottom of the card and it's gonna all have that same stitch detail because we die cut it with the same die. And then to give a cool kind of baseboard look to the floor, I'm just gonna take a piece that's about a quarter inch wide, maybe about an eighth, and we're just gonna layer that right on top of it and that's gonna give it just a little bit of a detail. So it's really easy. You just have to trim another little piece off and layer it on top and it's always gonna give you a really great floor look. Now in our awesome art supplies die, there's this big paint splatter piece. This paint splatter piece was sized perfectly for our canvas. It was also sized perfectly for all of our magic messages die. So this is magic spring messages and you can see that they all fit on our awesome little paint splatter. Then we also have our holiday messages and those fit really great. And then of course our original magic messages too. So not only could you use other sentiments in your stash, but all of the magic message stamp sets are gonna fit perfectly in this paint splatter. And so we're gonna use the one that says, you make me smile. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of color to all of the little kind of like flourishy splatter things that are around this phrase. And those colors are gonna match the paint splatter that we have going on in the background of the card. We'll add some tape runner to the back and you can see as we add this paint splatter to the canvas that it is a perfect match and it looks so pretty on that rainbow inked canvas. We saw earlier how great the canvas looks on a portrait card. Well, it also really, really looks great on landscape. So we're going to add some foam squares to the back of this whole thing and then we can layer that onto our paint splatter background. And I just think this is so pretty. And honestly, the card could be done just like this, but of course I had to have fun with the art supplies and with some fun stamps. So we're gonna layer a cute scene around this canvas. But before I do that, I wanted to make sure I knew all of the colors of the card so I could decide how to color everything in. So we're going to use some guava cardstock as the card base behind the scene. And I feel like that pink really just makes everything pop and makes it so bright and happy. So now we're going to take out those art supplies and we're going to die cut that from some white cardstock. We're also going to do some white wood grain too. And a brown wood grain for our awesome art palette. To add color to these art supplies die cuts, I went ahead and picked out markers that really matched the inking of my background. So we inked with some bubblegum ink, so I found some pink markers that matched it really nicely. For the paint brushes, I'm using some E30 markers and just doing some nice little blends. The cool thing about these is you don't even have to blend that well and it looks amazing on the die cuts. So I just did the tops of the paintbrush and on one of those paintbrushes, I'm gonna add some paint. So I'm using a black marker and I'm just gonna add a little bit of black paint to the top as if our Critter wrote the You Make Me Smile with that paintbrush. Next, I'm gonna build these paintbrushes. And for the little section there, I'm sure it has a name, but it's kind of like the little connector piece between the wooden handle and the brush. I used some metallic silver cardstock, and I feel like that makes it look really, really realistic. So now we have our three paintbrushes ready and we can add some color to the other paint two piece and also to another glob of paint. I'm just using a lot of the same colors that are gonna coordinate with our inking. For the jar here, I'm using some nice light turquoises in the BG family and I think it looks so pretty on the jar and I love it kind of darker towards the outside and lighter towards the middle. It makes it feel like a clear jar with some water in it. For the paint tubes, I'm just using some nice light gray markers and then we're gonna layer the different colors of paint over top. Then for the caps of each of the paint tubes, I'm gonna use some really dark gray markers to blend those out as well. And you'll see these are really tiny pieces, so I'm not being perfect with them. I'm coloring really quickly, and I think that's what actually makes them look more realistic. And so we'll add the paint tube caps to the top of each paint tube. Next, I'll add some shading to that piece of wood. I'm just using one marker and just kind of going across the edges. And then we're gonna color in more of those paint globs. And once again, I'm just picking out markers that are gonna match the ink blending. And we can start to layer those different globs on top. I didn't even end up using all of the globs. I decided just to use four on this palette. So I can save that other one for another card. And then now for this stool, I'm gonna use those same kind of E30 markers to add some shading. You'll see that I started off a bit lighter and then I went back in with some darker colors to kind of darken it up and add a little more shadow. And I like to use, do that with these die cuts. Start light and then just add a little bit more. And oh my gosh, don't they look amazing? They look real, oh, it's so cool. I love coloring these so much. So for our jar, I'm gonna add some tape runner to the back and it has this little cut line in it so you can tuck things inside and we're gonna tuck some paint brushes in there. And by putting the adhesive on the back of the jar, that's gonna hold the paintbrush in place. So I'm gonna add one paintbrush, and then the other one just add it at a different angle and a little bit lower just to give it kind of a dynamic look. And then now we can start to add things to our scene. And of course we need to add some critters because it's me and I love critters. So this is the Just Add Glitter crafting stamp set and these little mice are a perfect match for the different art supplies. And it looks really cute to have a tiny mouse holding a giant paintbrush. 
So I'm adding my jar to the back and then I wanna cut off the edge of the palette. So I'm actually just marking it with a pencil so I know exactly where to cut. And we'll use big scissors and I just kind of connect the two pencil lines and then just trim right off. And by doing this, it helps extend the scene because it makes it feel like the scene kind of keeps going off to the edge and I feel like that just makes the card look really cool. So we're also gonna add that awesome little stool into the scene. And then I'm gonna use my scissors to cut a little slit between the paws of the mouse. That way he can really be holding the paintbrush and it looks really nice like this. So it's just one little cut with your scissors and then you can just tuck the paintbrush right between his paws and then have it kind of layered behind him and that way he looks like this tiny little mouse on a big stool with a big paintbrush and I think that's just so sweet. Now this mouse over here is going to be holding one of those giant tubes of paint because he's helping his friend create this giant canvas. And then I'm going to layer one more of the tubes kind of tucked behind and then layered onto the canvas to help bring the canvas into both sides of the scene. Then I'm going to take a white gel pen and add just some cute white gel pen lines all around. And you'll see that that really helps the different die cut pieces pop from the what is kind of a busy background with the paint splatter. I'm also adding some lines to the uh, little easel there and I feel like that really helps the easel pop and it helps it bring it into the white border of the canvas. Now this is a standard size card base at five and a half by four and a quarter. We'll add some tape under to that and then we can layer this whole card on top and oh my gosh, this is just so much fun. I love this canvas and easel so much. It's such a cool way to use the splatter from the art supplies. I love that all of the magic messages fit on that art splatter. The other thing that you can do in this canvas is create cute stamp scenes and I think that would be really fun too and I'm going to show you a really adorable card by Elena that does that but next up Shari is going to create a really amazing paint splatter card so take it away Shari so I wanted to create a really fun bright colored and graphic card using the paint splatter background stencil so I'm starting out by cutting a piece of white cardstock with the largest outside and stitch rectangle and then I'm going to stencil some splatters on two corners basically the top right corner and the bottom left corner and kind of fill the front of this card with splatters from the bottom left to the top right so I've just put this onto my media mat with a little bit of removable adhesive and then I'm doing warm colors on this part of the stencil on this corner. So I'm starting out with some bubblegum ink and I'm pulling that in from the corner. Then I'll go in with carrot as my orange color. And kind of do those splatters through the center there. And then my third color for the warm colors here is going to be sunflower. And then once I have it all filled in, I can go back in where I feel like I needed to add a little bit more color to the orange and the pink. And then I'm taking that stencil, I washed it off so all those warm colors of ink are gone and I'm not going to contaminate the colors I put on here next. And I'm going to do the same thing with a purple, a blue, and a green. I'm starting at the corner just like I did with the pink in the top corner. So I'm starting with some grape jelly purple ink. I'm using Forget Me Not for the blue. And then finally, I will use some freshly cut grass for the green. And I did a pretty good job of not overlapping any of these splatters, except for one little dot of green that overlaps into the yellow of the big splatter, but I actually kind of like that one little dot that overlaps. Now for my sentiment, I'm going to be combining three different alphabets. So I have Henry's ABCs dies, Smitty's ABCs stamps, and Owen's ABC stamps, which are those solid circles with the letter inside. I've already cut out the word color out of black cardstock using Henry's ABCs. Now I'm going to stamp the word U with Owen's ABCs, and these have coordinating dies to cut out those circles. So these are sort of a combination of stamp and die cut. And then for the last part that says my world, I've just lined up Smitty's ABCs on my block and I'm going to white emboss them on a piece of black cardstock. 
So I've just stamped those with my clear embossing ink, added my white embossing powder, and then heated it up with my heat tool till it's nice and melted. And then I'll just trim it down with my paper trimmer till I just get a rectangle that perfectly fits those letters. So you color my world is the sentiment and you can kind of see how that's going to look on that front panel. I'm putting some foam tape all over the back of that panel and then I will put it on a white card base. So I will have that little white border around the outside edge. And then I'm just laying my pieces on here to get my spacing correct. I'm going to start with that word color in the middle and I'm gonna pop all of these up on foam. So I'm using the thin foam strips to pop up the letters in the word color. And I'm starting with the L in the center and then working my way left and right so I make sure that my sentiment is nice and centered. So you can see how those strips work nicely on the back of these letters because they're nice and thin. So I can just put one down the straight part of the R and then I've put a couple other smaller ones. And once I have this on there, I already have foam squares on the back of the word U. And again, I'm starting at the center, just like I did with the word color, and then working my way out. And then finally, I will add some foam squares to the back of this little rectangular piece that says my world. And then finally, I'm going to use my sparkle glaze and add a little bit of glitter accents. So what I'm doing is I'm just kind of tracing in those little fingers of the splatters with some glitter. And I'm just working my way around. I'm not even doing every one, but just kind of one side of every splatter. Just to add a little bit of subtle shimmer. So this will dry nice and clear just with the glitter and you'll see that fun ink background through the glitter. And then this is my finished card. I really love how it turned out. I really love that new paint splatter stencil and can't wait to use it more. So I'm making a card using the fun art supplies dies today and I've already cut out all of my pieces from various colors of cardstock. I've kind of got a rainbow thing going on. I've used a rainbow piece of paper from the Really Rainbow Paper Pack for that background. And I've cut a panel from white cardstock with the rippled background. And I like to take a picture with my phone when I have something laid out like this before I start moving things. That way I can always go back and look at my phone and look at that picture in case I forgot where I had something where I liked it. Now these tubes of paint I've cut from some narwhal cardstock and then for the labels I'm using some sunflower cardstock and some sugar plum cardstock and then for the little tops I'm using that silver metallic and I was just rubbing it with my bone folder to make sure it's nice and flat. That metallic cardstock can warp a little bit when you die cut it and it's always good to just flatten it back out. And I just think that's a really fun look with that shiny top on it. Now for the paint brushes, I thought it would be fun to have some colored handles. So I've got a fake tan orange one and a blue jay blue one. Brown brushes, of course, and then the little part that holds the brushes on, I also have cut from that silver metallic card stock. And then I have the jar that I'm not going to do much to and my little painter's palette, which I decided I wanted it darker and out of this wood grain cardstock so it has that texture. So that little craft one that you see there, that was my first one, but I'm deciding to change that up and use that wood grain cardstock for my painter's palette and then add my little splatters of paint to that. which I just think that is so cute. And then for my sentiment, I'm making a custom sentiment using Harold's ABCs, and this is going to fit into my paint splatter. I've already laid out my letters on my block, which these are really easy to line up because they're square, but I'm going to stamp a test stamp of this sentiment on that piece of white paper that you see there before I stamp it onto my die cut paint splatter. 
So it says, you are a work of art. And that looks pretty good to me. I think my spacing is pretty good. And I'm just going to stamp that on to my splatter. Now I have turned it in the direction I want it to be on my card to where it fits like it is coming out of the jar there in the top left. And then now I can start to assemble things. So I've assembled the tiny pieces and now I can start to put my card together. So I'm starting out with that rainbow paper that was from the really rainbow paper pack. And I've just cut it to four and a quarter by five and a half so it covers this card base. And then I'm going to go ahead and put all my elements on this white die cut panel before I put it on my card. So I'm starting out with that big paint spill in the middle with my sentiment, making sure that's nice and centered. And then I'll start to work my way out with all of the other elements. So of course I'm adding my really cute paint palette. I just think this paint palette is so adorable. And then I'll add my paint brushes. I like this one overlapping the paint palette a little bit. And then I've got that blue one that I'll put towards the top, but I'm going to continue around, working my way around, filling this in, making sure things are spaced really nicely. So I've got that tube of paint and then I've got this green splatter that fits in there really perfectly. I'm going to put the other tube of paint in the other corner with that purple splatter of paint. I'll just add this one that's cut from some mermaid cardstock and then I'm going to check, add that second paintbrush now towards the top. So I like this look with all these supplies sort of scattered around that sentiment in the center. I think that's really fun. And then I'm adding a little bit of detail with my white gel pen to these die cuts. So I'm adding a little bit of a shine mark on that jar to make it look like glass. And then I'll add a little bit to the labels of the paint tubes. And then that's all the things that I feel need that white gel pen detail on this card. Now I'm finishing it off by putting some foam tape all over the back of that panel that I created and then I'll just center this up onto my card base and I'll have that nice rainbow border around that white stitched ripple background which I just think is really fun. It's nice and subtle but it adds just a little something extra to that white background. And then here is my complete card with all those really fun die cut art supplies. I can't wait to use these more in future cards. Oh my gosh, I love this card so much and the custom sentiment in the center is just so sweet and it's such a fun way to use the art supplies with the stitched ripple backdrop. And then your stenciled card is so fun and I love all of the different fonts for the sentiment. And next up we have some incredible cards by the design team and first up we have this card by Tammy and she has her mice and her cats painting and I love how she used the smaller ink splatters from art supplies onto her canvas. I just love how Callie took that paint splatter stencil and she just shifted it up to the right just a little bit and it looks incredible and I love the die cut sentiment over top. This is the card by Elena that I was talking about. She actually created a really cute canvas that her mice are painting by stamping images into it. And I think this is so much fun and I can't wait to try it too. Here Mindy shows us that these paint splatters don't necessarily have to be paint splatters at all. In this case they are a bunch of melted ice cream in the background and I think this idea is incredible and the little awesome white gel pen lines on the ink splatters really make them pop. This is the card by Rebecca and I that inspired me to make the card we made today. And it's kind of like the same card, but it's a portrait version instead. So I think that's really, really cool. I also love the smaller layered paint splatters behind the paint splatter that has our sentiment. Audrey's creativity blows me away. She took the paint splatter stencil and she turned it into a get well soon card. And oh my gosh, with the sentiment caught a bug on it. So clever and so fun. The bright primary colors on Callie's art supply and canvas and easel scene are so gorgeous. I love the sentiment in the splatter and how she added really bright color to all of her die cuts. 
Elise was inspired by the just add glitter sentiment when in doubt, just add glitter. And she added some fairy dust stencil paste over top her paint splatter. And I think it looks so fun. Maureen has our springtime bunny painting a beautiful picture. And I love that that paint splatter is the perfect place for a sentiment. This card by Kara is just gorgeous. I love the inked background and the paint splatter over top and the custom sentiment. So much fun. This is the card by Mindy that inspired our card today. So it was a nice, fun mix and match between the two cards. And oh, I love that brick background. This card by Lynette is so sweet. I love how she used the mouse where we can see his back as if he's admiring the painting in a gallery. So amazing. And then this is the card by Grace that inspired us to make the magic picture changer today. It's so much fun and such a cool way to use this die set and incorporate it into an interactive die. Here's a quick and easy card that I created this card in less than five minutes by inking the paint splatter stencil over the stitch ripple backdrop, adding some die cut letters and some holographic cardstock to the back. Letitia's clean and simple card is incredible. I love the Be Creative sentiment and her rainbow paint tubes all lined up. So stunning. And this card by Megan is incredible. I love the ink splatters that she added from art supplies all over her magic picture changer. And as you pull the tab, you get another sentiment. And the way she colored the art supplies at the bottom just blows me away. So we cannot wait to see what you guys create with these products. They are some of my brand new favorites. So make sure to share it with us. Thank you so much for watching today. And I hope Hope you have an absolutely amazing day. Bye!